Hi, it's Ross War here from War Infrastructure Management and InfraManage. We're looking at this report here that I produced for the Ingenium Conference back in June 2013, and this is the third in a series of videos looking at the chapters of the report. This one's quite a, a big subject. In fact, uh, we could spend an hour on its own on the subject if we wanted to, and it's around population demography. There's another set of videos on the site uh, from Professor Natalie Jackson from back in February around demography, which uh, give you a much fuller understanding of that and a big Q&A. So I direct you to those if you want to have a much better understanding around the demographic pressures in New Zealand. What I've done with this chapter of the report is had a look at the changes in demography and just building a case for the fact that there's some quite rapid change going on in New Zealand and it is going to impact our infrastructure and our infrastructure funding. The interesting thing is as a result of the Christchurch earthquakes, we didn't have our last census and it's only just occurred in the last six months. We don't have the 2013 census information yet, so we're still working off the 2006 figures, which are getting a little bit old. The first slide that you'll see here is uh, looking at the overall New Zealand population and, and it's quite easy to see that there's a few regions, Canterbury and Auckland and Bay of Plenty uh, and Waikato that are growing. The rest of the country, and in fact, is either static or declining in population. As we'll see a little bit later in this uh, presentation, it's worse than that because where it's static and declining, we're also getting, in total numbers, we're also getting quite a rapid shift in the age structure of the population towards a more aged po uh, population. And that presents its own challenges in terms of the funding and the delivery of infrastructure and the service levels that population require at different phases of life. Um, if we look at the New Zealand uh, population maps on this next slide, we'll see that in 2006, the South Island was roughly a quarter of New Zealand's population at a million people, the Lower North Island another million, Auckland a bit over a quarter at 1.4 million, and the Upper North Island making up just under the other quarter. The projections through to 2031 from 2006 uh, show quite a rapid shift in population. So the overall population of the South Island doesn't grow that much, uh, doesn't shrink either, but the reality is it moves from being a quarter of New Zealand's population to a fifth of New Zealand's population. The Upper North Island's much the same, sorry, the Lower North Island's much the same. Auckland's the big mover, moving from 1.4 to nearly 2 million population by 2031. And that projection's still on track as far as we know at the moment. And the Upper North Island, um, takes up another um, fifth. So you've got two fifths of New Zealand's population living in Auckland by 2031, and then a fifth in Upper North Island, Lower North Island, and South Island. What that is going to mean, uh, if we work on the theory that dollars follow people, uh, as do political votes in, in a democracy, which New Zealand is, is that there's going to be a lot more money spent on infrastructure in Auckland. We're actually going to struggle to keep up with Auckland's infrastructure demands through this next 20 to 30 year period. Uh, also, Auckland's going to be able to vote and change governments at two-fifths of the population. So, that, so logically, governments aren't going to stop spending money on infrastructure in Auckland. And that's going to create real tensions for the rest of the country in terms of the, what's left and, and available money. Um, for the rest of the country, as we're also going to look at, uh, the, the other issue that we have is simply that the populations are getting older quite rapidly. And uh, Dr. Natalie Jackson has quite a bit of information around that. Um, just finally, before we move on to some detailed information about demographic change, I put a uh, page in the report on working age populations. And this is again based on economist information and UN population data. And New Zealand's not doing too badly. We, we've still got a, a relatively young population compared with uh, a lot of Europe and uh, uh, Russia and South Korea and places like that, but our population is ageing and that's going to create some tensions and, and, and form of skill shortages and again later in another session of this report we'll look at the impact of that on infrastructure and engineering. The demographic changes in New Zealand uh, vary by region. Auckland's probably the least, or is the least, uh, or the youngest population and uh, large Pol Polynesian and Maori population there and so least, least impacted by the over 65 growth in population, whereas Marlborough, Northland, Bay of Plenty, Taranaki, Tasman um, are the ones where they've got the, the, the highest growth in that. So the slide will just show you that as an overview. If we move on and look at Canterbury's um, population, and this is from the session back in February again, uh, if you want to look at that, there's a lot more detail there. But what you can see is that from the period 1996 to 2011, most of the growth 
in Canterbury was the zero to 64 year stuff. And that's the stuff that we've historically known. Uh, you know, this is mum, dad, the kids moving in and working, you know, schools, playgrounds, uh, just just had life as it's been in New Zealand for the last 60, 50 to 60 years. What is really interesting is how quick that shifts. And the projections from 2011 to 2031, and these are um, the National Institute of Demographic and Economic Analysis, uh, University of Waikato, this is their information. But what you see is that almost all the growth in the Canterbury region in the next coming period, the next 20 years, is going to be 65 plus. And that's quite a major shift. It's quite a major shift in thinking. Just looking at Christchurch on its own, and bearing in mind that we haven't had the fine adjustment on these figures since the earthquake, and that we'll have that later this year. Uh, but the same pattern, but even more pronounced. Hardly any growth in the zero to 64 years in the next 20 year period and almost all the growth is um, 65 year, and it shows up very clearly on the slide that you're seeing at the moment. The, the thing also in the next slide showing is that uh, you see those, those projected growth in the 65 year, but it's the, the 40 to, to 60 year where the drop offs are, the 15 to 19 and the zero to four. So in summary, less children uh, in the system and working, you know, peak working age population moving out of the district to other areas and out of the region to other areas. Um, Timaru, where I live, uh, we've got some more figures again from the National Institute of Demographic and Economic Analysis up on the slide now. And what it shows is that absolutely classic provincial New Zealand town that everybody knows about. Net migration gain uh, up to about age 15 to 19, and then a real loss of your young adults as they move out for tertiary study and for work or international travel. Um, so big gap in your, your 19 to 29 year olds uh, shows up, and then you get the gain again coming in through to maybe the mid 40 year olds, and then quite a growth going on in the retired population. And that, that pattern, and the reason we use Timaru, um, the classic loss of young adults, uh, minor family gains and a growth in the uh, retired population is just a pattern that's getting repeated all over provincial New Zealand. That does have knock-on effects for service levels. We'll look at that in detail in the next uh, some of the next sessions. Um, and as you'll see in this this next slide as well, almost all the growth is uh, by population age change is the 65 plus growth. So there's some real issues there. Just a couple more slides that Natalie Jackson provided us, and that's simply um, the teaching profession, um, aging very rapidly, high predominance of females, <coughs> excuse me, um, and they, the question is, who's going to teach our kids going forward? And it's a very good question. I think uh, if you read anything out of the teaching profession, they've got some real concerns about that and about who, who is actually going to do that and about replacement within their profession. Um, it's the same in hospitals. So the next slide shows the, the, the um, doctor and nurse um, population and again, aging and very heavily weighted to female uh, practitioners. And um, a really good question is in 20 or 30 years time, who's gonna be doing that in the provincial regions? And the final slide that we've just got up here for you to see now is um, around the farms and around the population make up but again who's going to be buying the farms and so New Zealand's overall population uh, overall economy is still very heavily dependent on agriculture in terms of our export earnings yes we have 60 to 7 percent of our economy is delivering services but those services are actually paid for by our export earnings and so there's some real questions around rural population uh, and around the servicing of rural population education health um, the, just the whole range of rural servicing and even people to work on the farms. And so it's interesting, in, in Timaru here we're starting to see Filipino migrants and uh, Vanuatu and uh, uh, people from um, Fiji, uh, other Pacific Islands working on our farms, working in our, in our agricultural um, areas, working in fruit picking and in pack houses for fruit and stuff like that. We're starting to see the, the start of the shortage of skills in, in our agricultural economy, and that's going to create some challenges going forward. So, in summarise this section, we've just got some real challenges around this ageing population in New Zealand. Uh, it, it impacts provincial New Zealand particularly. Um, you're going to have a lot more people on fixed incomes, a lot more people with a lot of time on their hands. Um, still wanting a high degree of services, but not necessarily prepared to pay for those services. So there's, uh, along with the fiscal tensions we talked about in the last 
uh, video, there's some real tensions around service expectations and changing service expectations of rapidly aging populations. Looking internationally, of course, Japan is well down the track on this, as is some parts of um, Europe, and certainly uh, good places to look if you want to see more advanced um, trends of what's going on in that area. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the next one. Bye.